Okay, hi there and welcome to another video on supply side policies. In a previous video in this playlist, we looked at market based supply side approaches. Uh, let's take a look at interventionist policies. Here's our opening question. What policies might a supporter of government intervention advocate to stimulate aggregate supply? Well, an interventionist SSP or supply side policy involves one or more types of government intervention to overcome what are perceived to be market failures, which then have an impact, a detrimental impact on aggregate supply. There are many interventionist policies that we can look at. Some governments think that uh, one of the key ways to address supply side weakness is to use a fiscal supply side policy in particular to intervene to reduce the depth and scale of poverty in a country. There's growing interest, for example, in universal basic income as a type of intervention to underpin and support the incomes of some of the poorest parts of the population. The government may also feel that left to itself, the free market fails to provide adequate public goods essential to the efficient working of the economy. A good examples include environmental public goods such as flood defence. Governments may feel that uh, the supply side potential of the economy is being underutilised, uh, being held back by big regional differences in employment, productivity and incomes. So some sort of active regional policy designed to bolster and lift supply side capacity and investment in underperforming regions could be a key part of their approach. Likewise, the market mechanism left to itself may under-provide, under-supply uh, housing. So the government may use uh, the objective of increasing spending investment in social housing as a way of boosting the supply side capacity in the housing sector. And there are many, many ways of examples, many examples of where governments can intervene in the labour market. Perhaps they feel there's an under provision of training. Uh, perhaps they feel that uh, not enough attention and money is going into vocational education. So policies to lift human capital, to upskill uh, the labour force, improve uh, training in uh, things like STEM subjects uh, is a part of, the, again, an interventionist approach. And the government may decide, uh, an alternative, of course, to the free market approach, to transfer some businesses out of the private sector into the state sector through nationalisation. Quite a few of the privately run train operating companies have had their franchises removed and some franchises some franchises have now moved back into state ownership. So here's a slide, just a key summary slide you might want to use for your notes, just giving you a feel and a flavour for some examples of interventionist policies. So typically we'd associate with this approach higher government spending on public services, education, health, housing and state spending on critical infrastructure including uh, energy. The government typically in this approach would be committed to things like minimum wages, perhaps even a living wage, designed to underpin work incentives and productivity in the labour market. The government may decide to make the tax system more progressive to increase revenue to help fund public and merit goods. We've mentioned an active regional policy. Another interventionist approach could be to move away from full-scale trade liberalisation which is a market-based approach, and instead perhaps bring in some selective import controls, such as tariffs and quotas, to protect domestic industries. Interventionism may also involve some kind of management manipulation intervention in foreign currency markets to improve competitiveness. And we'd associate interventionist approaches with nationalisation and also much tougher regulations of key, uh, key industries. One of the issues at the moment, as we head through 2020, is the negative impact on aggregate supply uh, of the deep downturn in the economy uh, precipitated by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So what we are seeing, starting to see, are starting to be introduced are some supply side policies to prevent what's called economic scarring. Now, scarring is damaging to aggregate supply and here are three points. Scarring effects can, can, can occur when people become economically inactive. People perhaps lose their jobs and uh, become long-term unemployed and may stop the active search for work. 
because they have structural barriers to getting back into a job. Businesses fail and the stock of businesses active in the economy may decline. And net investment, that's investment, net of depreciation, can become negative in a deep downturn. Businesses not spending enough on investment to replace obsolete capital and technology. So those are the scarring effects. And here are some policy responses, interventions, if you like, to prevent a fall in aggregate supply. These include employment subsidies, the government's furlough scheme, for example, which is probably going to last between six and nine months. Perhaps the government might relax immigration controls to address skill shortages in certain industries. And we've also seen the introduction of things like loan guarantee schemes to try to improve corporate finances and therefore reduce the risk of uh, a whole raft or surge in corporate failures. One project you might want to look out for in the weeks and months ahead is something which has been considered in the Treasury, which is or has the title Project Birch, which is essentially where the state decides to fund some acquisitions, some equity stakes in key businesses that are facing acute financial difficulty, perhaps in transport, uh, perhaps in power, who knows. Um, and there's a, a hint here that the government's going to adopt a much more interventionist approach to prevent the labour scarring and the economic scarring effects caused by the pandemic. So hopefully you can see here how an interventionist approach differs from a free market approach. Both have the aim of promoting the supply side of the economy. Of course, the evaluation is to think about which policies might be most effective at a given point in time.